Hey folks, Virgo Sewing here, bringing you a video on how to clean and oil your Sears Kenmore 158 series vintage sewing machine. And uh, this is also quite applicable for some of the 148 series machines that look a lot like this machine. So let's get right started. First thing I like to do is to remove my needle and to remove the bobbin case and it's very important to take your little lint brush and just go into the bobbin case and clear out any dust or lint that might be in there because that will affect the movement of your bobbin if it gets too clogged up. So that seems all good and we're going to start from top to bottom with the cleaning. So. First, we'll open up the front cover here. What I love about these machines is that the panels are so easily accessible, you really don't have to do much to, uh, to get them open. So, I'm just gonna take my brush and see where there's any dust or lint or bits of thread, and I'm just going to get them out. We wanna make sure that we can clean as much as possible before doing any oiling. And this, my machine isn't too, too dirty. I haven't been using it all that much, but it has been sitting for probably a couple of weeks, so it's in need of a little bit of attention. So that's all right. And you want to get into the needle bar area, Let's see if there's anything there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove my foot, although this isn't quite necessary. And I'm going to get nice and in between the feed dogs. I'm going to get the bristles of my brush right right in there. A very handy piece about these machines is that this plate pops out very easily and you can get anything that's going in between there. Well, you see I have quite a bit of dirt in between the feed dogs so that's very very important to get in between there. So I'll close this cover for now and we will go to the hook race area which is here and just get any sort of dirt or thread or lint, dust, whatever might be in there. I can see it now in the air as I brush it. I can do a bit of a rotation. And just really do as much as you can. Don't be afraid to spend a good few minutes here because this is where uh, a lot of bits of thread and dust can really collect. All right. And it's quite unlikely that you will find any dust or lint in the other areas of this machine, but it's possible, so make sure to get there as well, if that's needed. For your tension assembly, what you're going to want to do is lift up your presser foot so that your discs are spread apart. Take your brush. First, just use the brush and clean out any big bits of dirt or dust lint and then take a clean piece of lint-free fabric and just basically floss it through the discs. I like to bring my fingers to one side to get the, the disc closer to you and then push it the other way to get the other disc and really just give them a good clean with the fabric so that your tension assembly is nice and clear like so. Once we're done cleaning all the thread and all the lint out of the machine, we are ready for oil. I'm going to be using TriFlow lubricant as it is uh, recommended by pretty much everyone who is a sewing machine enthusiast, but you can also use regular sewing machine oil that allows you to administer one drop at a time. So we are going to start from top to bottom and I'm going to remove the top cover of this machine, which is very easy on this model. Now, some of the uh, 148 series or 158 series, you'll have to do two screws on the top, but that's quite easy as it is. So, the general principle is to put one drop of oil, uh, or two drops of oil, wherever metal is moving on metal. So I'm going to start at the needle bar area, and I'm just going to quickly administer a drop everywhere where metal is moving on metal. 
So just bear with me here and have a look as I do so. On these machines there are quite a few different areas where metal is moving on metal, so be sure to have a good look and get all of them. Very important is the needle bar area. There's two areas where you have to do it, the top where it passes through and the bottom. It's very important to run your machine as you're oiling as to work the oil in. And there's a, a, a hole on the top here and at the top here where your presser bar is, there's a hole there. So we'll move our presser foot up and down. And it's good to get uh, it, the presser bar on the bottom where it interacts with the machine. If you neglect to do this for a long time, your, uh, your presser bar, presser foot, might be stuck in the up position, which I have seen quite a few times and put your machine on a zigzag setting and you will see where this part moves back and forth right here so put a little drop on either side and run the machine that's about it for the needle bar area we're going to go to the top of the machine now it looks quite intimidating, but don't be intimidated. All you have to do is search for where metal goes on metal. So we have one area here. You can put some oil on the cans, although mine are quite well oiled, so I'm going to leave them for now. Uh, in this little hole down here, put one drop of oil. Where the main shaft interacts with the machine, put one drop. And you can see all the little areas here where the metal parts are moving on each other. And you can just give those some oil. And you can play around with your machine settings and really just see what changes and what moves. And you can give all of that just a drop of oil. Now under here, you can see where I'm about to oil. There is a mechanism and you can actually get to it from this hole here. So make sure to get in there. So that's it for the top of the machine. So uh, you want to put a drop of oil on both of the parts of the hook race that interact when they're spinning interact with the rest of the machine. So I'm putting one there and one there. Very, very important. And you can get a drop of oil behind the hook race where the metal bar moves into the rest of the machine, or rather into the gearbox. Now, underneath here, there are quite a few moving parts so you want to make sure to oil each and every one of them with a drop of oil. Drop of oil there, drop of oil here. I'm not oiling too too much because the machine already has a bit of oil in it and it's not completely dry. However, it's very important that you do so if your machine is dry. Drop of oil here, drop of oil here. And we are just going to run the machine and keep watching. Drop of oil here. Drop of oil there. Now in between the hook race and area in the middle of the machine there is that little piece that is easy to miss. So just really make sure to survey your entire machine and look where oil is, sorry, metal is moving on metal. Underneath here, behind the motor, that's a very easy area to miss, so don't forget to oil there. As well here, where this shaft behind the motor intersects with the machine, put some oil there.
And I think we have just gotten about everything that the machine, that the machine requires. And the last part of this video is going to be dedicated to uh, if your machine has not been oiled for a long time and the feed dogs uh, have ceased to move. One of my customers has uh, come upon this issue with their machine. So uh, if your feed dogs are having this issue, stick around for the last part of this video. So if we look down into our machine, you can see this area is what you will need to focus on if your feed dogs are giving you trouble. And as I move the stitch selector knob, I you can see it actually moving. And if your feed dogs are stuck, uh, that they will likely not move, or they will, rather the feed dogs will not uh, engage while your machine is running. So what you do is you just go down in there and just put a bit of oil, or a lot, you can do a lot for here, where the this mechanism that moves when you turn the dog, the Nile, uh, when you when you uh, engage the stitch selector. And what I like to do is I've had the issue when they're stuck, and after you've oiled it, you can go down there with something and just give it a little wiggle with something hard until it sort of breaks loose, and just keep turning the stitch selector knob until the feed dogs start to engage again. This has been how to clean and oil your vintage Kenmore 158 series sewing machine. Thanks for watching.